Good morning everyone, I'm that dude over there, and finally we get to move on in our gauntlet, where we challenge each region as a Nuzlocke. However, that leads us into the slowest region of Sinnoh, with one of the stronger champions in the Pokemon series, Cynthia. Will we complete the Sinnoh region? Or will we hit a new personal best and be set back to the beginning? Please God, as funny as it would be, please don't do this. Anyway, let's find out. So starting our run, we pick up the best starter for Sinnoh, Chimchar. There's little alternative fire picks compared to the grass and water options. Not only that, but my favorite starter, Piplup, gets a pretty bad learn set for the early game and becomes a liability against Cynthia's Garchomp thanks to their ground weakness. At least I'll get to see Piplup grow thanks to my rival. What did I name them? Well, the only person who's going to fuck up our run is the person I stare at in the mirror. So of course I know what his name is. It's me! Does that mean I get to come back? Nah, the bit was fine in Johto and Radiant Dawn, but Barry is a rival and not a former protagonist. Alright, see you later. Our team so far is just being built up by your typical Sinnoh team. Starter plus Bidoof, Starly, and Shinx. It's not until we get to Jubilife that we finalize our team with Psyduck and Bidoof. Psyduck is the only usable water encounter we get before Rourke, and Bidoof is the only grass encounter you get. That's good. In fact, if you're a dumbass like me, you could run back and forth in Jubilife until Badoo evolves. This isn't a joke, I wasted several hours and days trying to friendship evolve Badoo for an advantage against Rourke. Upon arriving in Orberg, we start running around for our final encounters for Rourke. We catch Geodude, Zubat, and enter the Orberg mines for our final encounter of Onyx. We use Chimchum to weaken it and status it with Burn. However, Onyx, for whatever reason, decides that joining us on our quest was worse than just dying. So we lose Onyx and begin running a marathon for early Evo just so it can evolve into Roselia. Razzletiff takes out all the gym leader's Pokemon, with the exception of Cranidos, who gets wiped by early Evo. I apologize if this doesn't sound the most entertaining, but this was the worst part of the run for me, only because, like me who's typing this right now, I'm too tired to care after being forced to waste several hours working on something that I thought was cool in concept, but became hard to justify with time. We take out the bull cut team before having to team up with Cheryl to escape the Eterna Forest. Because Cheryl is an obstacle for getting an encounter, we decide to wait till she's gone to get a proper encounter. Wait a minute, did I just skip over an early game roadblock? Holy shit, I think I skipped over an early game roadblock. Okay, so we have to save some girl's dad from the Bullhead Squad, which means we go against Commander Walmars with her fat cat. This cat has priority fake out, hits like a truck thinks to stab normal moves, and we have little options for proper switch-ins on our end, is what I would say if we didn't have Intimidate Staravia, Leech Seed Paralysis combo from early Evo, and Mock Punch from Chimchomp. So getting back on track, we go find our Eterna Forest encounter and... Oh, no. No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! Wait, 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 wait! Oh, thank God, I didn't have to worry about over-sexualized female Lopine. Instead, I can revel in the meme that is Femboy Lopine. Now, if you'll excuse me. With Femboy John's evolution, we challenge Gardenia for a second badge. But just like Rourke, this battle is a breeze with Chimchump and Agent 529 destroying the competition. The Bullhead Squad decide to hold the local bike shop owner hostage, this time led by their commander, Koskopiter. The biggest threat on our team is her skunk tank with its nice slash. Crits hit through attack drops and the only person who takes resist damage is Chimchump, who can't do anything to hit her super effectively. However, Skunk Tank isn't immune to Leech Seed, so it was only a matter of time before Skunk Tank fell to our parasitic team. After picking up the bike from the man we rescued, we make our way down Cycling Road for our most overpowered ally next. See, in Generation 4, the only way to get Garchomp is by either getting Gabite in Victory Road or Gibble in Wayward Cave. In Diamond and Pearl, you have to wait for the 6th gym to get access to this secret part in Wayward Cave because you need strength to access it. But we're not in Diamond and Pearl. In Platinum, you need Rock Smash, which is an HM you get after the first gym. Thanks to our early encounters, we were able to scalp up all the encounters in Wayward Cave, except one. 
However, it's nothing to worry about. The encounter has a 15% chance to appear, compared to Gibble's 20% chance, so there's no way we encounter- So after biking to Heart Home City, we pick up Roman the Eevee and rush over to the gym leader. Thanks to Agent 529, we're able to avoid the dangerous ghost type moves with her normal typing. So after setting up with Double Team, none of Fantina's Pokemon could hit her, resulting in a no casualty win. We head to Solacion Town, catching Chansey on Route 209. We then head to the Lost Tower to catch a new Pokemon, that being a female Ghastly. I guess I could have waited till night to get that encounter to have a chance for Duskull, but what can you do, right? That's a Route 209 encounter. What? Route 209. Platinum doesn't differentiate between Route 209 and the Lost Tower, so that's a Route 209 encounter. But... Uh... No... You... You can't... Damn it! Alright, let's move on. Surely this won't be the worst thing to happen, right? Jesus, I hate double battles! Alright, onward to Veilstone City for some actual training. Because this gym is, well, a gym. I know that sounds confusing, but try to follow. Maylene is our next big boss fight. And like with Coscopeter, Lucario is Maylene's biggest threat. Everything else is a big nothing. I try to pull a leech seed strat like before, but Lucario decides to nip that in the bud before I get the chance. Thankfully, Chimchump is able to destroy Lucario with its own typing, but only barely. This dog is strong as nuts, and by taking our early evo, we have no good answer against Crasher Wake's Quagsire. <sighs> I guess it's fine, we've only encountered three tragedies so far, so if we can keep the deaths here to a minimum, we should be- Alright, it's team building time. If we lose any more encounters, we might end up wiping, and I will cry if we go back to Kano. Scrambling through the PC, we quickly put together a team with Chimchump, Clarence the Zubat, Esther the Gastrodon, Femboy John, Energem the Luxray, and Frisbee the Bronzong. Because we have Clarence, we need to run another marathon in hopes to evolve it into a Crobat. Before fighting Wake, I teach John Grass Knot, as it's not very useful and I'm willing to burn it for a move to use against the Sire. We do manage to defeat Wake pretty well, and as we set off, we get hired by the League to investigate terrorism. See, the difference between the previous protagonist and this one is that before we merely coincidentally ran into Crime Lords, in this game, we are directly working with the League to stop the Bullhead Squad, which leads us to Celestic Town to face off against their leader for the first time, Cyrazon. This team is pretty bad since Energem destroys most of his Pokemon. I insist that we capture him for interrogation, but because I'm canonically 10 years old and my partner is an old woman, we are powerless to stop him from teleporting in a fade to black sequence. But now, with the power of 5 gym badges, we're able to go home and surf to Canalav City to fight the next gym. That is, if we didn't go on a side quest through the Iron Islands. I did this for two reasons. One, there's a shiny stone. Two, if we ever lose our starter there, there's a free furry bait Pokemon to take up, the Mantle, that just needs another marathon experience. However, a lot of Iron Island battles are team-up battles. While, and while you can challenge them separately, there is one that is mandatory, similar to the bug catchers in Eterna. This is a full team battle against Ace Trainer Jonah and Brenda. These two are stacked and easily overpower Riley's Lucario while I switch into Clarence. This battle instantly becomes 10 times harder as I'm essentially thrown into a 6 mon SOS battle from the Alola games. We manage to defeat them but we do suffer a casualty to the untimely whirlwind of the enemy Staraptor. We get the HM for strength and change our fallen Clarence for our final potential flying member without a 4 times weakness. Spirit the Togepi. And since this is another friendship evolution... So after we getting Togekiss after another hour or so of running, we destroy Rourke's dad with the combined efforts of Esther and Spirit. With the sixth badge in hand, the story finally goes full swing as another terrorist attack leads to the three lakes of Sinnoh being in danger. We fly off to Lake Valor where we encounter the, the final commander of Team Bullcut. Stop in Saturn. He's a boss, alright. But we do this again when we fly to Lake Verity and fight Walmars again. But with our new team, she ain't that scary, right? The professor and my inferior clone. Hey! Get worried about my other half. 
and demand that I go check on him. But to do that, I need to beat the gym of the leader that will go unnamed. And I really had to no good strategies for this fight. Or did I? See, a long while back, I went into the Maniac's tunnel for an encounter. I ended up getting a Sandstream Hippopotas. I wasn't thinking of using it because I didn't want to run a Pokemon with an ability that fucks with the majority of our team. But then I realized that this Sandstream ability could actually be great for us. See, what makes the Ice Leader annoying is their Ace Frostlass. It has Snow Cloak, which increases its evasion during hail. This wouldn't be a problem if 9 times out of 10 it didn't have an Abomaso preceding it with Snow Warning. Snow Warning summons hail the next turn, and when combined with Frostlass, it creates a high evasion Mon with guaranteed blizzard checks. If we could circumvent the hail, we could get rid of Frostlass's superpower. This is where Den comes in. Unlike the Obama Snow, Den could jump right into battle and summon a Sandstream, removing the buffs on Frostlass, giving our Frisbee the opportunity to tank and destroy the leader's team. By the way, how am I doing on Lake Acuity? Yeah, that's what I expected. <laughs> well, it's the time in the game we raid the army of Bolt Cuts for the Master Ball. Cyrazon doesn't put up much of a fight, but his team has gotten stronger since the last time we fought him. So kudos. Stop in Saturn isn't a threat, and we have to go through Mount Cornet in order to pursue the terrorists. This means we have to leave one of our party members behind, since I don't want to waste a spot for an HM. But since Femboy John has been dead for some time now, we don't have anyone to throw on our team for a sixth yet. So instead, we can just throw on a random sixth with no consequence. We get to the top of Mount Cornet, where we have a team-up battle with myself to defeat Walmars and Koskopiter. However, despite our win, Cyrazon still manages to summon Dialga and Palkia for total universal domination. And in a scene that made 10-year-olds shit their pants in 2008, a dark Eldritchian Pokemon god comes to scoop Cyrazon into the Distortion World. What is the Distortion World? Basically hell. Except, if it's hell, it's a lot cooler because of the floating debris and upside down waterfall and bottomless bits. I like it, but it's a shame that Game Freak won't put this much effort into dungeon designs ever again. But I guess it's for the best. The Distortion World is a glorified railroad with no other encounters and janky platforming. Cyrazon makes one final stand against us, and for once, his team is a terrifying roadblock that should be taken seriously. It's a good thing that my five Pokemon are diverse and well trained, or we would have been in deep trouble. So we now come face to face with the Dark God of Distortion. And who better to lead than Jenna? She's been on the team for 5 minutes and is level 5, so she should be perfectly able to take on the level 47 Distortion God, right? Nah, we just throw the Master Ball. Free God for no work, baby, let's go. Now let's get to the final gym leader. Arriving at the super fantastic, amazing, and joy-filled Sunny Shore, we fight the depressed gym leader Volkner and his magnetic team. The biggest challenge I had running into this gym was making sure I didn't overlevel for the gym. His level cap is 50, and for a comparison, we leveled our team to 48 for Cyrus. We still had more trainers to go against before reaching Volkner, and I was paranoid about it. I like to play with level cap since it incentivizes strategy over power level, but thankfully, we manage to get to Volkner with no one going above the level cap. Esther manages to sweep the majority of the team with help from Chimchump, Energem, and Frisbee for the Luxray at the end. And now we can cover the team for the elite- WAIT! I have to show this undoctored clip of Chimchump close combating Blissey. Sorry! It's an obligatory Sinnoh slow joke, alright? So, eh. Alright, now let's move on to the final team analysis. Our leader is Chimchump the Blazing Infernape, with Flamethrower, Flame Blitz, U-Turn, and Close Combat. Next is N, the sturdy, newly evolved Magnezone, with Mirror Shot, Charge Beam, Thunderbolt, and Discharge. From there, it's Esther, the sticky and slimy Gastrodon with Surf, Waterfall, Mud Bomb, and Ice Beam. Next is the serene and graceful Spirit the Togekiss with Aurasphere, Fly, Shadow Ball, and Psychic. After that is the Swift Goddess of Death, Nyx, the Pressure Radiating Weavile with Exeter, Ice Shard, Slash, and Shadow Claw. And finally, our most controversial pick is Alicia 
the pressure radiating Garatina with Ominous Wind, Earth Power, Dragon Claw, and Shadow Force. Now, hold on. I know what you're going to say. Oh, God, using a legendary on your playthrough. Run invalid, guys. This guy uses a legendary and OP Pokemon for the finale. I get it, but let me make my very small case to explain this. One, you get Garatina at level 47, meaning you can use it for the League, unlike Rayquaza, who shows up at level 70. In Johto, I couldn't use Suicune because of a weird bug that occurred that prevented me from getting it. But even if I did, Slowbro, Wooper, and I would go as far to say Floraligator are still better Pokemon to use than Suicune. None of the Kanto Legends are worth it, and the ones that are, you can't find or are locked behind post-game. Two, in Sinnoh, the only Dragon types you can get that are not Garatina, it's Garchomp. And that option sailed when I failed to get it in Wayward Cave. Yeah, I caught one in Victory Road, but by now it would hurt my team composition with the encounters I have. And finally, shut up. You aren't playing the game, so you have no right to criticize me for my choices. You filthy animals. Anyway, the Elite Four. These guys don't play around, especially in the Sinnoh remakes where they get competitive broken teams. But in the original Sinnoh, they are merely tough and not insane. Eren is a breeze and Bertha is the real beginning. We have no answers to Whisk Cash, so we use Alicia to take down the inferior Swampert. With that out of the way, Esther can sweep the remaining team with Ice Beam and Surf. Flint the Clown is next with his easy breezy fire types and leads with Houndo. Chimchomp solos with close combat and then leaves the rest of the team to Alicia and Esther to eat their attacks and push back with their own super effective moves. This then leads us to probably the hardest elite, Lucian. Why is he the hardest? Well, besides being the psychic type elite with good coverage, I would say his biggest threat is Bronzong. We don't have anyone on our team that can hit him super effectively without getting clapped in retaliation. And with its huge list of resistances, it makes fighting this guy a pain in the neck. What's worse is that if we stay in too long, it can set up and sweep. But thankfully, Giratina clobbers it before it can do any real damage, which leads us to the famous champion, with now the strongest team, Cynthia. I say now because technically she got outclassed only to reclaim her title in the remakes. Anyway, her diverse team is great and she leads with a Pokemon that has no weaknesses prior to Generation 5. And it's able to take the hits thanks to it not having Flamethrower. But Garchomp comes out immediately afterward. This is Nick's true role in the team, to take out Garchomp by outspeeding with ice priority attacks. Chimchomp destroys Lucario with close combat and Cynthia sends a Milotic. I send an N, hoping to defeat it quickly, like the rest. However, due to arrogance, ignorance, or recklessness, I used a plus one discharge only to die from Miracle, knowing that it used Miracle before and missed. From there, Esther was sent out to tank and finish the job that N left behind. With her Milana gone, there was nothing stopping us from victory. Nyx outsped Roserade with Ice Shard, and Esther two shot. I mean four shot the Togekiss with Ice Beam, thus concluding the Sinnoh arc. So far, I think it's safe to say that Sinnoh has not only the most limiting decks to work with, but also the most streamlined encounter system compared to the other games. Like at no point in the game is there a part where you shouldn't have the tools necessary to take on the later threat. It's rarely you that's holding yourself back from beating this game in a poor manner. So with that said, be prepared to hopefully go into the finale of this saga, where I complete the mainline Pokemon games as a Nuzlocke, and end it all with the black and white era games. If you like what you saw, why not leave a like, and subscribe to let me know. And if you're still mad about me using Garatina, let me know in the comments. But until next time, stay safe out there.